Hi, and thanks again for tuning in to the Texas Flycaster video channel. This channel goes with www.texasflycaster.com. That's a website I created back in 2007. Loaded with information and photographs about travels and technicalities on fly fishing in Texas. Thanks for tuning in. Please leave a comment or subscribe. Hi guys and welcome to this Friday Texas Fly Fishing Report. It is Friday and it is August 4th already. I can't believe how fast time is flying by. What I wanted to do kind of this in this episode is, is remind you guys of where this information comes from so that you don't take it to heart too much. It goes from hyperlocal, which is the stuff I do, right here in North Texas and report on directly like the little bit of footage you saw at the beginning the intro that's means if you see that footage at the beginning that means i've been out on the water and i'm going to tell you something on my website that you can do locally you have to go to the website though i have to get you guys to the website so you can do that uh, local stuff based on what i'm telling you and it's fresh and accurate now the rest of the information i provide is gleaned from a lot of different sources and you got to keep in mind number one they're all conventional number two is they're going to give you the best picture they can possibly paint uh, fishing because who's going to keep tuning in or reading to see bad news uh, nobody basically we got enough bad news as it is in the world so what you want to do is um, make sure that when you read for example that the, the uh, scrolling report at the very end you want to uh, pay attention to words like fair poor uh, good and I don't think I've ever seen great I might have seen great a few times TPWD who generates those reports um, has a vested interest in in driving tourism to these lakes and to the coast so Bad is a word that is, is not thrown around very much, and that's why. Uh, on the other hand, uh, as you read the reports this week, for example, you'll see that everything is, uh, is slow across the state, and that's not unusual. It happens, you know, even on the coast right now, we're in, we're in kind of a mediocre tide situation. Winds are completely variable. The temperatures are weird for Texas right now. It's kind of throwing a, a wrench into the works, so to speak, uh, as far as uh, statewide saltwater, freshwater. We got winds coming from strange directions. I had a west wind, a north wind, and an east wind. Not any wind from the south the last few days. So it's really, really strange. And that affects where we can fish. And it also affects where the fish are because of, of blown currents and things like that. So, and the tides, if they're mediocre, don't do anything to help us. If we, have a, if we have a really extreme tide swing, then we can always on the coast play the tides and uh, catch them on movement. But it's, when it's slack like this and the winds are slack, there's just not a lot to go on. And uh, fish, as the water heats, of course, without wind and without water movement, the water starts to heat up more too. So even though it's not terribly hot, I'm sure that the water temperatures are, are not going down on the coast. Around here they are. Um, you'll go to my website of course and I'll give you detailed information on fly fishing for carp on Lake Ray Roberts here in North Texas and that is uh, kicking in again. I'll just say that much about it here and if you need a guided trip you need to go to www.texasflycaster.com and contact me because we're headed right back into a situation now. It was really We've had a really strange situation on Ray Roberts, unlike any other year I've seen, um, but it's starting to starting to straighten itself out a little bit. So you might want to check back on that website on a regular basis. And I got chickens running around in the background, so they're kind of distracting me. 
But anyway, uh, you want to definitely uh, check the website, texasflycaster.com, and, and keep looking there as, as things. And we've got birds flying through. <laughs> it's a great backyard, by the way. And if you didn't know it already, we're here at the fly bar. But anyway, I wanted to also clarify, now that I've clarified the information about that I get about fly fishing in Texas, you know, number one is it's all best case scenario and even that sometimes is, uh, is a little too rosy. I would love for you guys to tell me I'm wrong. The only information that I have from me directly is the stuff I do. I'm not going to talk about things that I haven't done or I will talk about things I haven't done, but I'm not going to stand behind them. Uh, I'm just reporting what's, what's being reported actually. So it's second, third hand, and fourth hand information. However, if you find my information to be inaccurate or anything you see on any of these reports to be inaccurate, I'm begging you to, to, to call it out and, and straighten it out and let us know exactly what, what the situation is. From what I can tell, I'll just talk about salt water because fresh water is all over the map. All over the map. All the lakes are, are just, it's, a, it's weird as far as how average everything is and uh, kind of unpredictable. We're definitely on the the slow uh, phase right now in freshwater lakes. But on the coast, I still see some in interesting things on uh, the, uh, the lake, Sabine Lake. And that's way up, you know, on the border between Texas and Louisiana. So that's not exactly next door for me. I can't just go out there and, and check it out. But maybe if you're near there and you're watching, you can give us some information on that. Uh, it's still looking good, but it's dropped off some. And the other place is Rollover Pass, which if you think about Rollover Pass, I've been there a few times. That's all in Galveston, up, up on the peninsula there. Um, if you think about that place, there's always water movement there because of the cut. And that cut, I think, I mean, that's your go-to spot right now because even with the smallest of tides, there's a big water movement there and they're still catching fish there. It's not above average though but at least they are uh, they're reporting fish being caught there at the uh, at the cut there rollover pass so think about that I, I heard a long time ago they were going to fill that in and cut that pass off but apparently they haven't done it yet so let me know about that maybe they trenched it i have no idea anyway that's what's going on as far as fishing reports now the other thing i wanted to clarify for you guys that, that are maybe here for the first time you know i've got a lot of subscribers in my opinion a lot over a thousand subscribers now um, when it comes to companies and endorsements and things like that i used to really be up front and, and publicize that these companies endorse me well what that really meant was i buy their stuff I get a deal on some of it and some of it I don't, but I really like it and they are, I've, I talk to these people, give them ideas and they give me ideas and things like that and share, share my information, just a very little bit of information they share of mine, which is kind of a drag really for you guys that are sponsors out there watching this and trying to learn from me how to do these YouTube videos, you should really spend more time talking about me. <laughs> but set all that aside, what I'm trying to say is. I endorse them more than they endorse me. I have to buy their products. There's not a product that I use, whether it's a Yeti cooler, whether it's a Yeti tumbler, whether it's a Howler Brothers hat, shirt, or whatever. Um, any of the things I, I use or you see me wearing, who cares? I don't care about clothes, really. Um, they're functional, and I'm, I'm very pleased with Howler and the fact that not only is it functional, it looks good, but it, the function of Howler stuff is, is, is really, really good. Um, but they don't send it to me in a box and say, here, try this. Nobody does. So this is a, it's a kind of a new era, in a way, for endorsements, so to speak. So that's why I don't mention the guys anymore. Um, if they want to send me stuff for free, and uh, like they do other big shows, um, my show is obviously not that big, uh, or something's wrong. Um, feel free to go ahead and drop something in a box. Uh, there's, there's things I'm looking at now and changes I'm making. I'm not letting go of anybody that I've had in the past uh, very easily. I'm trying to entice them into being a little more forthcoming. But uh, for now, um, there's always room for more clothing manufacturers of a larger nature, uh, larger companies. And there's always room to try 
uh, new fly rods, of course. I've, I've tried many fly rods where I borrow them or they're on loan from a, uh, a factory rep and then I just send them back when I'm done, which really is fun, really is nice, really helps them and it helps me help you guys figure out what kind of fly rods we like for what we're doing and what kind we don't. Now looking forward into the future, I've, I've threatened many times and sickness got in the way and other things have gotten in the way about reporting starting this fall. This will be the fall because of my schedule and the way it's working out. Uh, where I'll be reporting less from Texas waters as, as the cart thing dies off and more from Oklahoma. So there's going to be two places that, that we're going to spend time and maybe a third. It's a heck of a long drive in Oklahoma. That's the lower Illinois is the third long, that's a long drive from here. Um, but definitely Blue River, you've seen those reports. If you haven't seen them, go back to last, you know, back in the archives of the YouTube videos and you'll see what kind of fishing can be done, fly fishing in, uh, in uh, the Blue River. And then I haven't been to Broken Bow, Be it's Billy Beaver's Bend in, Bro in Broken Bow. So I call it Bend Bow. I haven't been to Bend Bow in, I don't know, since I, before I was sick, so two or three years at least. And what that means is I've never seen it since the floods, which is kind of embarrassing, but I'll go ahead and tell you that. I have not seen Benbo since the floods, and we're going to go back. We're going to go back there starting probably in September um, when it's just stupid hot here and there's nothing going on, and at least get the lay of the land for you guys and maybe spy on some people who are fishing, you know, do a spy routine and see who's out there. Maybe we can steal some information from those very proprietary fly guides that work that place, which is actually simply a stocker joint, but it's, it's pretty and it's cooler temperatures. So we're gonna go there regardless. That's the report for this week. Be sure you watch the scroll. I've also got one fly I want to show you here in a minute at the very, right after this. I'm going to show you one fly that I like for salt water and this time of the year. I call it a Cosmopolitan Clouser. So we're going to get a tight shot of that. I'm going to show you the Cosmo Clouser and then it's off to watch the scroll or better yet go to www.texasflycaster.com to get more information about hyperlocal fly fishing and book a trip. It's the best way to learn. It saves you so much time. If you just book a trip with me, you want to learn carp, just come on out on the skiff. The skiff's doing great. Everything's running great. And we will uh, teach you some things and show you some spots. What I do when I go out is I show spots that you can get to on your own. So take that to the bank. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. Check out this fly coming up next. All right, guys, so what this is is a typical clouser pattern, but what makes it different is a couple of things. The color, the color selection is critical on this. We've got a, a bright, bright pink on top, and this is calf, uh, kip tail, and of course the uh, bucktail on the bottom. Both of these are fluoro fluorescent, so fluorescent bright colors. And then when I tie my, uh, and these are all for sale at www.popsflyshop.com. When I tie these, they're on a stainless steel hook. And I use brass eyes of different sizes depending on what you want. But the stainless steel hook and the brass eyes are two things besides the, the hard coat I give the head. They give these a lot of longevity. And you'll notice that I don't bother with any weed guards. I don't do that on any of my saltwater flies because I think it's pointless. If you can cast, you don't need a weed guard. So these are the, the, the color and type of fly that from what I see of the conventional reports, these colors are hot right now as far as catching fish. The one thing I would do differently if you tie these yourself is if you're after speckled trout, I believe it's Mustad makes a circle, stainless steel circle hook and those will not let go of speckled trout in the weak mouth that they have. So that's the one change I would make. But you're essentially, you're going with pink and chartreuse, pink thread, brass eyes, stainless steel hook, 
in a variety of sizes. You can go a lot bigger than this and you can go a lot smaller than this. And also your flash is going to be gold, always gold. Think of a gold spoon and how good those are. Think in terms of gold all the time on salt water in my opinion in fly fishing. Gold is a non-loser. So anyway, that's my fly for your enjoyment. I hope these work for you. If you just want to order some, go to www.potsflyshop and get some there. Thanks for watching. Have a great week. Let me just congratulate you on making it through another Texas Flycaster broadcast. Please feel free to go to www.texasflycaster.com to get even more details about the videos and supplementing the videos you find here. If you really like what you see, please feel free to comment or subscribe.